What's up, everybody? It's Brandon from Box Office Banner and Cold Flick Symposium, and I, of course, have another movie review for you. I'm going to be honest. I completely forgot how to pronounce this movie. Uh, Malum, is that what it's called? The new horror movie that is basically not really a remake, but almost one, a reimagining of The Last Shift. Now, while I cannot pronounce the new title because I forgot how to pronounce it, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Don't lose your mind on me. Um, The Last Shift is a movie that I really enjoy. I've seen it one or two times. I'm not overly familiar with it where I can pick out each and everything, and I didn't rewatch it before I watched this where I could compare and contrast, like this scene happened, this scene happened, although there was a few. I'm like, okay, that's familiar. That's kind of similar. But one thing I do remember about The Last Shift is it was just an underrated movie that kind of comes out of nowhere. It's like that movie, you know, as horror fans, you find yourself buying and renting all the shit that didn't hit theaters it has a cool cover and you strike out nine out of ten times nine out of ten nine of those ten times you're looking at a movie and you're just like why do you do this to yourself oh my god you spent money on some shit like this again and then right when you're about to give up on this tactic you pop in that last movie and you get a last shift and you're just like you know you get a last second shift actually segue much um, where you're sitting there, a shift in enthusiasm, where you're like, oh my god, that is why I torture myself with all these bad horror movies, because now I got this gem of a horror movie that nobody's ever seen before, and I can brag about it, oh yay yay me, do a pat on my back. That's what Last Shift was. Now, I watched Last Shift again maybe a year, year and a half ago, after watching it for the first time. I don't think I watched it initially when it came out, I think it came out in like 2014, I watched like 2016, I think. And I was immediately kind of taken back by it. But then I kind of forgot about it. And then it became one of those movies like maybe a couple years ago where I was like, I gotta get my hands on this again. That's right. That movie. It's dope. And then I did. I bought it. And I was like, yep, just because I remember, if not better, very cool balls of the wall fucking horror movie that you literally every step of the way you're like, what is going to happen next? So when I heard out they were coming out with this movie from the same director, it's a reimagining. He's got a little more of a budget, even though it's still not big budget. We're not talking Marvel here, people. I was very interested, but I was also very skeptical because I'm like, Man, you just came out with it and it's fine. This is risky business. How would I feel about it? Um, I'll say from the jump, this movie does have some pretty damn good atmosphere. I think the acting isn't amazing, but it's fine. And it delivers a lot more of the same in terms of what is going on. But as much as praise I'm seeing for this film, I'm not on the bandwagon other people are. Because, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people saying that they love it. And then I've seen a few people even saying they've seen Last Shift, and they love it. And I'm not on that wavelength. I'm not saying you're wrong. We all have different opinions. Um, I wanted to love it, but I did find myself wanting to go back and watch Last Shift, a lot of the movie. Because while this movie did, like I said, delivered on the craziness aspect where things were flying at the screen, everything was going awry a mile a minute, and a lot of this is preference. But when I was watching Last Shift and everything was going on, that you know those what the fuck moments that were seemingly full speed ahead, you couldn't even slow down, you couldn't even think for a second, you're like, I can't even give up with this. Everything is happening so fast. This imagery, this imagery, this monster coming from this corner, what is happening over here? It was a what the fuck moment. Now, let me tell you this. It's the same words, but y'all know the difference. When I'm watching Last Shift, I was like, what the fuck is going on? When I was watching Malum, or however you pronounce it, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because I saw Last Shift first, but I found myself in Last Shift given like... Uh, just oh my god what the fuck like this is insane you know like what the fuck kind of with some laughter after it. watching this one more often than not there was like a bewildered like what the fuck i just i don't know what's uh, can't explain it can't quantify it i don't know if it's the directing whatever work because i mean it's obviously working for some people but it was a different kind of what the fuck it whereas in last shift it felt interesting like wow like i can't even keep up what's with what's coming next and this one it felt more cluttered and more just like where are we going what is happening this is almost too much and i think maybe a lot of that has to do with expectations too hear me out because last shift as i talked about in the beginning is a movie where 
you're going into it, you have no expectations, you're at your bottom of the lowest, you're like, why do I buy movies like this? And you're pleasantly surprised and you're hooked in and you're like, wow, this is throwing everything but the kitchen sink at the wall. When I'm going into this movie, I am skeptical, but not in the same way where I'm not expecting, you know, a great movie. I'm skeptical, wondering if it's going to ruin that movie that was such a surprise for me many moons ago. So I'm watching it in a way where I'm already critiquing it and I shouldn't be. And that is not what you should do. But there's something in the back of our minds, man, when we already hold the property sacred and we already have that red flag where we're questioning shit, where sometimes we might say, nope, not going in with that attitude, but subconsciously it still ticks at you. And I wonder if that maybe did have an effect on me and my score in this movie, but it just did not work as well. It doesn't mean all of it didn't work, but the hecticness of it felt more messy than just like, wow, oh my God, fun, as it did in the first one. Maybe it's because I hold Last Shift to some high regard because it was my movie and now everyone's going to know about it because it's at the theater and now my movie's not cool anymore. No, I don't know what it is, but that's kind of the vibe I got. Um, I thought one thing I'll say, like the ending of this movie, I really felt for the character and it was kind of fucking fucked and crazy. They did do some tweaks here. It's not a flat out remake that make it interesting enough. Um, One thing, what was I about to say? Damn, don't you hate when this happens, especially in the middle of a review? Um, I did like, I the new girl's good. Again, maybe it's biased. This review could have a lot of bias to it. I'm coming out and saying that, which that's I'm gonna preference that even more later. I preferred the other girl, and while this was low budget, it wasn't a higher budget. Again, it's not fucking Marvel people. It still had a little bit more gloss on it you know it's a little more shiny i mean they handled all the darkness and the creepy little dark spaces of the corners and the corridors and all that shit when stuff was gonna pop out they did handle that really well for a horror movie of the day but again you're gonna hear this a lot but seeing the last shift when i watched the last shift it was almost like while this is still lower budget it's there's a reason he did this again it's definitely got a little more polish to it Looking at the more lower budget, obvious lower budgetness of Last Shift, I do think that this type of movie boded well with that lower budget. Like very similar, completely different movies, like an original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like they could re remade that like seven years later when Toby Hooper got famous, and it would just feel off because there's something about that grainy, gritty feel about it that really nailed it down. For me, Last Shift did that. This was good because because i know of last shift it was bothering me a little bit i know i know people it's a theme it's a theme so what i'm gonna say at the end of the day with this movie i think if you've seen last shift you should still see this because there's enough here that's you know at least slightly too different that's good you know there's nothing nothing wrong with it i'm not gonna give it a bad score by the end of it i was like you know there's enough here that works for me so I'm personally going to give it a 5 out of 10. Wanted to give it a lot higher. But this is also, 10 is up, people. I'm aware that it could be due to my bias for Last Shift. But I'm also going to say, if you haven't seen Last Shift, I think this movie could work so much better for you. Now this, again, this is a movie that is like frantic all over the place. What is going on? Know who you are. There could be a lot of fans that just walk out of this movie because they're not into that but if you're into that type of you know obscure but also crazy horror almost like a 24 ish and you've never seen fucking i say almost because there's a hint of that but there's also a hint of like you know malignant type style that's not a 24 ish it's just kind of you know it's own little ball of different things you could definitely be put off by that in general but i think you're gonna have a way more higher chance of being susceptible to really enjoying this movie because it's a it's a niche type style but if you've not seen the last shift and you're not con you find yourself comparing to the original which is not something i do but i think because the last shift was fine as is and it was only what like fucking it's just now coming up on a decade for once i'm that guy that says doesn't need to be remade i did find myself being that guy it's just like it's there's other movies that need to be remade. Yes, it was lower budget, but you did a damn good job. 
I get it. You want to spread the wealth and all of the enjoyment to the rest of the world. But that enjoyment was already here. And I know it's great. And I know it's good. And I feel like that kind of plagued my desire to finish the movie with any type of enjoyment that I wanted. Although there was moments that stood out. So objectively, I think this is a 7 out of 10 movie. Definitely go see it. But subjectively, it's a 5 out of 10 And a lot of that is absolutely subjective and biased. I'm here ready to say it, but this is more for the people, I guess, that have seen it. And I'm curious if they have the same attitude that I do. I don't know. But let me know what y'all thought about this reimagining, man, because it is always interesting when they do this type of stuff. I'm not anti-remake. I'm pro-remake. I think how close it was is what really ended up dooming me. Because Last Shift was so good, and it was only a stone's throw away, dude. Like, what, 2013, 2014? Like, that, I forget exactly what year. That seems like yesterday, especially in these times. Fucking 2005, when somebody says that, I think it's five years ago. It's just, it's, it's too, maybe it's too close for me. Um, let me know what you think, guys, if you've seen it. If you haven't, like I said, don't let this review put you off. Go check it out. Even if you're a Last Shift fan, definitely check it out, because I want to hear your thoughts, and you can tell me what the fuck Am I thinking, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> like, you're, you're so on point right now. Whatever it is, let me know. Like, share, subscribe. Love you guys. It's been another review. Man, I hope y'all, y'all fans of this movie like it more than I did. I wanted to. Definitely had moments. See y'all.